All right, let's do this, everybody. So I got to cover arithmetic and NumPy because, well, it's kind of important. There's a couple different sections to this topic. We'll begin with scalar arithmetic. Scalar, it's a linear algebra term. Really, it just means a single value. We can apply operations with a scalar, a single value, to entire arrays. We covered a little bit of this in the first video in the series. We'll need an array to work with. I will create an array named array and p dot array, then just add a few numbers. I'll add the numbers one, two, and three. That's good enough. Then I will print our array. Now here's where scalar arithmetic comes in. We can apply a single value to each element within an array. If I were to take our array plus one, each value would have one added to it. We have two, three, four. Let's subtract two. We'll just go through all the basic operations. Array minus two, one, two, three. Subtract two from each would be negative one, zero, one. Let's multiply by three. Array times three. Array times three. We get three, six, nine. Array divided by four. Array divided by four. We get 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Let's raise each element to the power of 5. The power of operator is two asterisks. Raise each element in our array to the power of 5. 1 to the power of 5 is still 1. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 3 to the power of 5 is 243. That's basic scalar arithmetic. Scalar is a linear algebra term. It just means a single value. Now we'll cover vectorized math functions. A vector is another linear algebra term. A vector is a single dimension, such as a 1D list, whereas in a scalar is a single value. Using vectorized math functions, we can apply a function to an entire array without writing a loop. Here's what that might look like. Let's say I would like the square root of each of these numbers within our array. Well, the NumPy library does have some built-in math functions, just like the math module. We'll access the library of NP, which is NumPy, call the square root function, pass in our array. The square root of each element are these values. 1, 1 1.4 and some change, and 1.7 and some change. We can round each value. Let's change these numbers. 1.01. 2.5 and 3.99. Let's round each number within this array. NP, call the round function, pass in our array. Here are all the numbers rounded. We have 1, 2, 4. To always round down, you can use floor. 1, 2, 3. To always round up, you can use seal, meaning ceiling. 2, 3, 4. There's different built-in math functions you can apply to entire arrays. You can access them via the NumPy library. There's also built-in constants too, for example, pi, np.pi. That would return pi, 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. Basically the first 10 plus digits of pi. Let's go over an exercise with vectorized math functions. Let's change our array to be one, two, three. And let's say that our array is actually radiuses, or radii. I think that's plural for radiuses. I don't know, I'm a coding tutor, not an English teacher. We have an array of radii. Given each radius, we will convert it to be an area of a circle. We're going to combine both vectorized math functions and scalar arithmetic. So this is an exercise for us. Given our radii, we'll have to multiply them by pi. We can access pi via the NumPy library, np.pi, times, now the formula is pi times radius squared, times our array, which we have named radii, raised to the power of 2. And here we'll use scalar arithmetic. We're raising each element within our array to the power of 2. The formula to calculate the area of a circle, given the radius, is pi times radius squared. All of these radii, converted to the area of a circle is 
3.14, 12.5, and 28.2. So that was an exercise. For this next section, we have element-wise arithmetic. We'll have two arrays. Each operation is applied element by element between two arrays. We'll create array1 equals np, call the array function. We'll pass in a list with the numbers 1, 2, 3 to keep it simple. Then we'll need a second array. We'll name this array array2. And this array will have the values 4, 5, 6. With element-wise arithmetic, we can apply operations between single elements between two arrays. For this demonstration, I'll print array1 plus array2. This will add together the individual elements, one by one. 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 6 is 9. Let's subtract array1 minus array2. That gives us negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. Let's multiply array1 times array2. We get 4, 10, 8. Let's divide array1 divided by array2. 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Then let's raise array1 to the power of array2. 1 to the power of 4 is still 1. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 3 to the power of 6 is 729. For this last section, we'll cover comparison operators. Using comparison operators, we can create Boolean arrays, filter data, and use element-wise comparisons. For this demonstration, we'll create an array of scores, like test scores. Scores equals np, call the array function, then we'll pass in a list of scores. So these will be test scores. One student got a 91, another got a 55, one student got a 100, another got a 73, one student got an 82, and another got 64. Using comparison operators, let's see if any students got 100, a perfect score. What we're about to do, we'll return a Boolean array. Print array of scores that equal 100, a perfect score. We're seeing if any scores equal 100. This will return a Boolean array. It looks like there's one student that got a perfect score at element number 3, or index 2, 0, 1, 2. Let's see which students got a passing score that's equal to or above 60. This is the greater than or equal to operator. It looks like there's five students that passed. We have true, false, true, 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 true. Or let's see if there's any scores that are less than 60. Did any students fail? There's one. We have one true. You also could use conditional assignment. For any scores that are less than passing, less than 60, we'll assign them to be zero. So if you fail, you don't get any points, so to say. We'll take our array of scores, use the subscript operator, then we'll take scores less than 60. We're selecting all elements within our array where the score is less than 60. Any that are less than 60, we'll assign them to be zero. And then we will print our array of scores. So now that one student would have a zero. They wouldn't get any credit if they fail. This all is a primer for filtering, which is another topic entirely, but it is a good time to introduce comparison operators. All right, everybody, that is different forms of arithmetic in NumPy. In the next topic, we'll discuss broadcasting. I couldn't think of any homework for you to do, so to help engagement with this video, comment down below where is your favorite place to take a vacation. And that is arithmetic using NumPy.